So I'll be talking to you today about um, some of my research I've done over the last uh, couple of years and some new perspectives and some uh, future plans. Um, this presentation like, tries to um, answer um, a few questions, like uh, why is it important to assess the natural hazards? Why is it cultural heritage important? What is the connection between uh, these two, the, the cultural heritage and the natural hazards? To whom and why is important to assess and monitor the natural hazards? What is predictive modeling uh, and uh, how does it work? Uh, I think um, like I'll begin with some basic introduction, like natural hazards are severe extreme weather and climate events that occur naturally in all parts of the world. Some regions are more vulnerable than um, others, depending on the local natural conditions. Uh, I will not go through the cultural heritage definition and so on. But uh, the impact of natural hazards on cultural heritage has increased over the last decades. Uh, protecting the diversity of cultural heritage is a constant and difficult issue, which differs from country to country and from region to region. Uh, the destruction of cultural heritage has a long-lasting impact and uh, damages or destroyed sites uh, cannot be uh, recovered in the future. The early 70s uh, uh, has revealed the, be the beginning of such academic work by the North American conservationists employed by the U.S. Army. And the effect of extreme events on cultural heritage has been uh, acknowledged and this has uh, now become an area of significant uh, research activities with a number of uh, case studies focusing attention upon cultural heritage in different parts of the world, including a better understanding of uh, associated uh, geomorphological processes. Is it mandatory? <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear it? Oh, perfect. <laughs> um, so uh, then uh, monitoring and saving as much uh, spatial data as possible will lead to a better understanding for local authorities and stakeholders to plan economic activities and then to uh, mitigation and management plans, uh, minimize, uh, minimize damage uh, costs and improve, improving environmental uh, protection. Uh, I will not go through these details because... Uh, so predictive uh, modeling is a process through a uh, which... Um, a process through which a future outcome or behavior is predicted based on the past and current uh, data available. Each model in is made up of a number of predictors which are variables that are likely to influence future results. And uh, once uh, data has been collected for uh, relevant predictors, a statistical model is um, formulated. The methods are divided into qualitative and quantitative uh, uh, methods. Uh, so the, the methodology uh, I was trying to gather around, uh, suppose um, we use a lot of old maps, a lot of field surveys, aerial photos, um, a lot of archaeological field work, um, um, and some like uh, 3D laser scan scanning to, um, in order to monitor the, the geomorphological processes that um, I will present. Uh, this uh, is one of, uh, one of the study areas. Uh, it's located in the northeastern part of Romania at the contact between uh, Moldavian, plateau, uh, Moldavian Plain and uh, Suceava Plateau. Um, it's an area of, uh, with a very high density um, uh, of Neolithic sites. Actually, this is uh, the site where um, the, few, the famous Kukuten culture was uh, discovered. Uh, uh, here I was trying, um, I did assess the vulnerability of cultural heritage sites to natural and anthropic elements. Um, uh, we, use, um, we use a set of natural and uh, anthropogenic elements uh, uh, like gullies, landslides, ponds, villages, and uh, roads. Uh, we took, uh, we used maps starting from 1894 uh, until 2012, from which we digitized each element that you see here, and uh, then um, 
I uh, applied some um, some weights to the elements, and then we got uh, we got the final vulnerability maps, which shows uh, how um, this vulnerability uh, evolved over the time since 1894 until 2012, and following the analysis, you can see. Uh, the number that uh, the number of cultural heritage uh, sites uh, under the high pressure of um, vulnerability classes uh, has evolved uh, over the time. Um, further on, um, uh, here we tried uh, we applied the Lesland susceptibility models to uh, cultural heritage sites. This was more of a methodological paper. Uh, we tried to. Um, <coughs> Like we use GIS-based evaluation of diagnostic areas in landslide susceptibility analysis from um, uh, Bakulets River Basin. It's a basin that has about 600 square kilometers. The highlights of, um, of the study uh, was to uh, see how many Neolithic sites are um, located in uh, areas with high and very high um, susceptibility to landslides. Um, uh, so first we tried to compare the predictive strength as a different diagnostic areas which were the middle of the landslide, the landslide scarp and the landslide area and then um, the most important factors of landslide triggering in this catchment are slope, land use, land form and sanitology. Uh, as the like the final output um, we, uh, the result was like the approximately 70% of the sites <coughs> of the Neolithic sites are located in areas with high and very high landslide susceptibility, which puts them in danger in uh, a future degradation. Uh, the landslide susceptibility maps, the final maps, can be used in hazard, hazard mitigation, disaster preparedness, uh, cultural heritage preservation, and uh, protection. Among the three methods used, we used statistical index, um, uh, frequency ratio, and analytic hierarchy process. Out of these three, statistical uh, index uh, had a better uh, predictability. Uh, so here is the, the study area. These are the, the, con the conditioning factors that uh, we have used to uh, produce the final susceptibility maps. We, we have aspect, land use, precipitation, slope, um, and uh, others, uh, lithology aspect, um, and uh, uh, topographic wetness index. Uh, so this is the, the data that we used in the study. Uh, we divided our uh, landslide dat data into training, uh, training landslides to build the model and into testing landslides, then to uh, test the predictability strengthness of the model. Um, these are one of the most uh, important Neolithic sites in, uh, in this catchment. As you see, they are all affected by, um, by landslides. This one, this is the limit of the site. This is like a huge landslide on both sides of the, um, uh, of the settlement. <clears throat> and this site, um, it's also affected by landslides and uh, by uh, river um, erosion. So these are the, the final suscept uh, landslide susceptibility maps produced with frequency ratio, statistical index, and uh, analytic hierarchy process. These are the success rate curves and the prediction uh, rate curves. Um, as a final output, um, we have obtained uh, like really good results um, following uh, using this, uh, the, these three methods. And as I told you in the beginning, statistical index proved um, the best um, validation. Um, then we choose to um, analyze the, the erosion of uh, some sites. As I told you, like it's uh, the site that is located um, uh, that is located here. We have monitored uh, this the erosion of the site. We did some 3D laser scanning, and here are the um, how the the edge of the site evolved. Uh, apparently, having almost each year archaeological excavation uh, influences a lot the, the erosion process. And 
uh, how the uh, the river um, has um, cut has meandering the the site. Uh, the next site, um, for the next site, uh, we also did um, some geophysics um, so that we have uh, highlighted the, the importance of the site. It's, um, it's a fortified settlement um, with um, protective ditches. Uh, also, like this site is highly affected uh, by, like, by uh, a landslide. Um, also, like on the steep slopes, there's a lot of sheet erosion, a lot of uh, archaeological uh, remains are washed down uh, the slopes. And here is like we, uh, we compiled um, a detailed uh, geomorphological uh, mapping with, um, with like inside this huge landslide, there are many small landslides which we have lighted the scarps for. A lot of sheet erosion and at the bottom of the landslide, we also have gully erosion uh, affecting the site. Uh, this was a newly discovered site um, uh, using uh, some of uh, my colleague uh, did some aerial uh, photos and we discovered this site and we decided to make some, um, again, some geophysical um, prospection and the site uh, is also like susceptible to um, landslides in this um, in the um, north um, northwestern part of, uh, of the site. Um, the next paper was again focused on the same study area, but this time we focused on gully erosion, which uh, was uh, like one of the method the main methodological problems of this paper was to debate uh, is like it's uh, if uh, overgrazing is really influencing um, the developing uh, the the starting and the developing of uh, gully erosion. Uh, we finally discovered that it doesn't influence a lot the the gully erosion. So again, we <coughs> divided our data into training gullies, testing gullies, and we use the same uh, Neolithic sites. Again, like the, we used uh, the same conditioning factors and as a novelty, we added the uh, density of, of the sheet folds, which, um, uh, which do, was the, the main um, novelty used uh, in this paper. Uh, so uh, these are the final uh, gully susceptibility um, index uh, produced with uh, frequency, frequency ratio method and uh, which uh, we included um, the sheep folds and this was not including the sheep folds and this including the sheep folds uh, as a conditioning factor and this is the statistical index method um, without and with the um, sheep fold density as a contributing factor. Uh, finally, we got um, very good validation um, of uh, our uh, of our gully uh, susceptibility index uh, models. So they are very. We could say that they are really reliable um, for the local authorities, also like archaeologists and geographers as well. Um, in the upper part of the basin, there are like some uh, management plans and anti-erosion measures, um, which are like to build um, concrete threshold, thresholds to stop the, the, the gully erosion process um, advancing and destroying, uh, destroying the sites which are located here. This including the, um, the plantation of black robust um, in the upper uh, part of the gully and this is like you see the photos this is like we're monitoring this gully starting with 2008 each year uh, we're going then and we uh, we survey the um, uh, the edges of the gully and after the building of the concrete thresh thresholds as you see here the the erosion um, has uh, considerably decreased uh, also, like following um, the study, we uh, 
we concluded that 67% of the sites are located in areas with high and very high uh, susceptibility to gully erosion. Uh, um, next work um, was to uh, uh, land use. We followed, uh, tried to track the land use changes in dynamics over the last century around the churches of Moldavia, Bukovina, from northern part of Romania. As you know, uh, the churches of Moldavia, uh, Bukovina are listed in the UNESCO World Heritage List, and uh, we use land use dynamics by means of remote sensing and GIS techniques uh, around them. Uh, a diachronic analysis was performed over a, a time span of approximately 100 years, and uh, we concluded that the natural processes and anthropogenic interventions have a significant role in the land, category, um, land use category changes. In order to uh, highlight the special fragmentation uh, degree and land, land use dynamic, we calculated indexes of uh, landscape metrics using patch analyst tool. Among, uh, among indexes of landscape metrics, we use Shannon's diversity index, mean shape index, mean patch age, and patch uh, richness. Um, this is uh, like uh, a flowchart of uh, the methodology we have um, implemented. And these are like the churches and the location of, uh, of them. These are like the, the final uh, results. We obtained very good results, uh, which uh, has um, highlighted like um, very um, interesting facts about how the land use has evolved uh, over the last um, 100 years. Uh, and here, like, we have some example of contrast between specific old houses and uh, new houses. You see the uh, specific old house here, here, and uh, I call them monstrosities of, uh, of the modern world. Putting, between, uh, putting them uh, near these ones, they look horrible. And the, this is like a heritage of the communist um, era. And a lot of, uh, of these uh, areas are subjected uh, to, um, to floods, to natural hazards. This is like uh, a plan that there was a huge flood in 2005. And you can see how many houses have disappeared from, um, from the area that was affected by floods. Uh, this is uh, the Voronets Monastery uh, here and the anthropogenic uh, interventions around it. This is like the houses that fit the landscape and the things that don't fit in the landscape at all. Um, we did another uh, study, was to um, highlight the shoreline dynamics and evaluation of cultural heritage sites um, from the shores of large reservoirs. Here is a study from around Kubyshev Reservoir, Russian Federation. Uh, the, main, uh, the main objective of this paper was to follow the, uh, the Volga River uh, modifications and after the building of the Kubyshev Reservoir. And uh, around the, the reservoir, we have a number of uh, 1,289 sites of which um, like a lot of them have been um, destroyed uh, not affected are only 198 sites uh, this was the monitoring of the um, of a, uh, the only left uh, paleolithic settlement uh, we did like with um, old um, Russian uh, maps or Soviet maps and uh, modern uh, field surveys with drone and uh, GPS. It has highlighted, we have highlighted uh, like um, uh, the site uh, has almost all been destroyed. Around 70% uh, of the site had been uh, totally destroyed. Uh, this is like a future work in progress. Um, we're trying to make an archeological predictive modeling in Northeastern Romania for the Neolithic sites. Until present, various qualitative and quantitative methods have uh, been applied in archaeological predictive modeling, among which uh, analytical key process, maximum entropy, logistic regression, 
and we're trying to implement uh, and test the use of new statistical uh, methods uh, in uh, APM. Um, for, um, we're trying to use frequency ratio and statistical um, index. Uh, but as I said, this is work in progress. We have just gathered the data and hope I will be able to present the results at a future conference. These are like some references I used in the presentation and thanks you thanks for your attention.